Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. In this podcast, we'll talk about the Commission's plan to regulate digital gatekeepers and ensure that digital markets remain fair and competitive for new entrants in the EU. An ambitious plan which is not without challenges. The world is changing at a phenomenal speed. Today we do our shopping online, communicate online, work online, we even fall in love online. But while online platforms play an increasingly important role in our social and economic lives, European laws regulating these new services date back to the turn of the century and current competition policy tools are ill-equipped to tackle current digital concerns. That's why in 2020, the European Commission came up with a plan to regulate the gatekeepers of the digital world and redefine how they can operate in the EU. So, what is the problem exactly? Well, the problem is that a few very large online platforms account for a very large share of the digital economy in Europe, and their role as gatekeepers between businesses and consumers with economic power and control over entire digital ecosystems makes it very challenging for rivals and new market entrants to compete. The increasing digitalization of societies has allowed these tech giants to access and collect large amounts of data, which is a crucial input for many online services and production processes, making it a critical element of the value chain of many industries. So how exactly does the Commission propose to end this winner-take-all dynamic and ensure a level playing field in the digital economy? In parallel to a series of antitrust proceedings against digital giants such as Google and Amazon, the Commission proposed a shift from ex-post antitrust intervention to ex-anti-regulation for large online platforms acting as gatekeepers. Now, what does that mean? Essentially, it means that instead of acting after a market distortion to correct the problem, this time the Commission wants to make things clear from the start and provide upfront clarity about what behaviour towards users and competitors will be considered acceptable. Let's hear the European Commissioner for the Internal Market, Thierry Breton. We know that in the digital space, speed is of the essence and we need to act quickly. Because if we don't act quickly, we may then disturb concurrence and destroy opportunities for some players who could have been uh, successful innovators. So the draft legislation sets out a list of do's and don'ts based on previous antitrust experience in Europe and imposes a series of obligations and prohibitions on gatekeepers that are considered to provide core platform services. These include, for example, prohibitions on discrimination in favour of own services, obligations to ensure interoperability with its platform and to share, in compliance with privacy rules, data that is provided or generated through business users and their customers' interactions on the gatekeeper's platform. Now, which platforms would be subject to these do's and don'ts? Let's now listen to Commissioner Margrethe Vesteger in charge of the digital economy. Gatekeepers, they are defined by the size, the role they play, and the durability uh, in the market. Gatekeepers, they are large players in terms of annual turnover, market capitalization, and they are active in several member states. Second, their role, that they are really operating as gatekeepers, so that they are in between a large number of businesses and an even larger number of individual uh, users. And third, that they have this entrenched position over uh, quite some time. So a platform that meets all these requirements is considered a gatekeeper. However, the Commission would retain the right to adjust these thresholds as technologies change and to conduct market investigations in order to remove or confer gatekeeper status to new platforms. Let's listen to the Parliament's rapporteur on the Digital Markets Act, Andreas Schwab. The problem is not uh, 20,000 European companies. The problem is between five and maybe seven companies. But it's not about regulating the market. It's about having a very clear-cut tool to fix problems that in competition policy have not been able to fix in the speed that was needed and that we want to fix ex ante. So who will enforce the new rules? This task will fall on the European Commission, assisted by a Digital Markets Advisory Committee with representatives of the EU member states. Now let's hear what stakeholders and academics have to say. 
get the consumer's point of view, we spoke to Ursula Packel from the European consumer organization Bayuk. The DMA must focus more directly on consumers' interest. That means, first of all, consumers must have a right to complain if a big tech company violates uh, the obligations they have under the DMA. There is nothing foreseen currently, also no remedies for consumers. And the second important point is that uh, the DMA should ensure more consumer choice of social network and instant messaging services. And she gives a word of caution. The risk that we see now is that in the legislative process, the big tech companies uh, will try to change the DMA so that it, allow, it allows them to justify their practices on a case-by-case basis rather than follow preemptive rules right from the start. And in the end, the risk is that nothing would change. On the other side, some European tech companies plead for a narrow definition of gatekeeper to ensure digital startups' growth and scale-up is not compromised and warn against imposing too rigid a regulation that would chill investment and impact negatively on innovation. A concern shared by some academics who generally support imposing new obligations on online gatekeepers but asked to clarify the objectives of the Digital Markets Act – and remain critical of other aspects of the proposal. Such as the criteria to designate gatekeepers, which has led to calls to improve the designation mechanism and enhance legal predictability, or the possible shortcomings in the Commission's approach to identifying obligations and prohibitions imposed on gatekeepers, with some competition experts asking for more flexibility. Furthermore, some experts believe that the exact scope and implementation of the rules on data portability, data sharing and interoperability could be further specified. And concerns over the enforcement mechanisms have also been raised. We spoke with Lara Natale from the Centre on Regulation in Europe, a think tank dedicated to promoting better regulation for the tech, media and telecom industries, about their recommendations to improve the Digital Markets Act. The SER recommendations for improving the Commission proposal seek to better balance the DMA's administrability and flexibility, complementing clear ex ante rules with more flexible rules. And we want to ensure successful centralised EU enforcement of the DMA. So SER suggests giving more supporting roles for national authorities, also self-learning mechanisms where enforcers learn from their inevitable mistakes will be key to improving the regulation over time. So, what's the way forward? Well, as EU lawmakers, Parliament and Council evaluate whether the Commission's proposal can make Europe fit for the digital age and ultimately their own positions, one thing becomes clear. This is the EU's most daring attempt thus far to radically transform the regulatory landscape for digital services. It won't be an easy ride, but one certainly worth taking. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.